Finally, we're going to Mr. Brad Cabana on line two. And I, my apologies, uh, Mr. Cabana, for keeping you waiting so long. Uh, at least now you're on the program. Welcome to it. No problem, Pete. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to resist the temptation to comment on what your last call to say about real <laughs> Newfoundland. I'm biting really hard. Well, lots of other people aren't resisting. Uh, oh, they're, we're getting boy. tweets and emails already. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of things to say about what he said. Anyway, go ahead. I can imagine. Uh, no, I was wanting to call about Muscat Falls, actually, and, uh, you know, and talk about the lawsuit that's going on. That's now been, uh, by the way, it's been um, pushed back now. It's going to be on the uh, 21st through to the 26th of February. There's a last-minute change in uh, in times. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in aware of the, uh, the, the uh, deficit projections made by the finance minister today, mm-hmm. and that, that to me is alarming. Uh, it go, of course, it goes hand in hand with Muscar Falls, and it sort of goes, you know, of course, hand in hand with what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, first of all, I think that I think that he's wrong. I think that he's actually underestimating the deficits coming up. Really? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It has hmm. to be underestimated. I thought all this revenue was supposed to start coming back in. Now I know that they're still pumping an awful lot of money out, but uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, this is this is pretty new. Uh, we knew that we were going to be running some deficits, but they were never projected to be this high that I was aware of, at least. Well, and, you know, I mean, to be honest, there's been a few of us that have been writing about it for a while now hmm. that. But look, you can't go, you can't sort of have a base spending of, of going government programs of say six billion a year, and then you're, you're constantly adding new projects like hospitals, uh, ferries, and so forth, mm-hmm. and not expect to, you know, you know, not expect to not run into deficits eventually. And now we're at a point where our spending is say six billion a year, that's, you know, on our services and everything that's required to keep the household for the year. And then on top of that now, we're looking at adding over the next three years, you know, to 2017, uh, sorry, four years, we're out looking at adding another $8 billion alone just for Muskrat Falls. That's just, and that's a hundred percent fine. Now. Yeah, I don't think that payment. comes into the debt calculation though, because that's essentially, of, you know, uh, borrowing money that we are going to pay back, much like a mortgage. Uh, you know, yeah. we're going to have the asset in the end. But really, I think it's Hebron <laughs> essentially is is coming into play here as well, isn't well, it? Is it not? So, you know, deficit, there's deficit and debt are two different things. Okay. Yeah. The oper- the oper- the the annual deficit is based on what we actually spend, whether it's. Whether it's on Muscat Falls, whether it's on healthcare, whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, as of, and against the money we bring in. But my understanding so that, is that all that uh, spending from Muscat Falls is not included in our deficit. That's wrong. That's hundred percent wrong. What the finance minister has said is that the, that 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 money will not count against the provincial debt. Because and, and that's a misnomer too. Because what he's saying is that 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 the investment, you know, the physical structure up there that's built will have enough value that it'll be equal to the amount of money that's put into it. So in other words, uh, in our what they call our net debt, right, which is our mm-hmm. uh, expenses minus off our uh, revenues, that our net debt won't change because it must grab falls because if it costs a billion, but it'll be worth a billion in, in infrastructure, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, so, so the bank will take the house back, essentially, yeah. Yeah, but for deficit, though, on the other hand, that's counted. And so... We'll have to include that eight billion dollars that's being spent. So, right there alone, if you average that out, say between now and 2017, that's approximately at least on its own two billion dollars a year, on average. You know, and some will be spent more in other in some years than other years, of course. Hmm. So, now I'm going to have to get some clarification on those. I'm not disputing what you're saying, but this is not hmm. the way it was explained to me, and not the way I understood it to date. But in any event, oh yeah, like any government expenditure, regardless of what it is has to go towards the deficit or debt or a surplus, whatever it is. A def, you know, government spending is what comprises the figures, right? Is and it not so, an Alcor doing that borrowing? It's the same thing. If the government, it's, it's like the $600 million that's put in first to to uh, to Newfoundland uh, and Labrador uh, natural resources. When that money's put in there, it's expended, right? It's expended from general treasury to to the natural resources, then they, they send Nalcor, say, $600 million. So it's it's got to be accounted for. And when it's accounted for is when it goes towards your deficit, okay? 
So every year the government puts out, say, a billion or two billion on Muscat Falls. It has to show on its books it spent that money because it borrowed it from somewhere mm. or it had it. And now it doesn't have it anymore, so now it's going to be borrowing all of it, mm. including the down payment. Mm -hmm. So, that yeah, you should get that clarified because um, that is what comp comprises your deficit. So that's two billion on average a year just for Muscat Falls for the next four years. Then you have to add on things like you just said, Hebron of about seven hundred and fifty million. Mm -hmm. uh, add on the add on the hospital up at Cornerbrook. There's mm -hmm. another seven hundred million. Mm -hmm. uh, add on, add on, add on, add on. Well, we and, have we know, haven't even talked about the uh, uh, the public service and the exactly. new negotiations going on. And of exactly. course, a lot of this a lot of this is is all about that and the fact that it has blossomed in the last number of years. We have a much bigger public service than we had. And, uh, of course, the salaries have gone up, and they want them to continue to rise, as they, as they should, I suppose. I think it's, uh, that's some of it, but I think they're getting unfairly labeled because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of expenditure that's happening within the government that isn't related to salaries or public service. For instance, things like road paving contracts, engineering contracts, architectural contracts, uh, if you look at what's expended by the Newfoundland government and break it down on a, on a, you know, a sector by sector basis, there's a lot of what we call discretionary spending that's happening out there that is basically since 2003 or two, between 2003 and 2005, uh, the government's been spending like drunken sailors on everything, you know, except for they have not, they have not topped up our pensions, mm -hmm. you know, and our pension liability now is actually grown to when Danny Williams got the $2 billion from Ottawa yeah. to put into it. Well, even so, after I mean, 2014, they say we're going to be right back to uh, where we were debt-wise, uh, 12 or whatever it was. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, pe the pension thing is a monster that nobody wants to look in the face because that thing is going to eat us alive. Well, it, it's only of our, it's, it's our own fault because the, when, when Paul Martin gave Danny Williams that $2 billion, mm -hmm. it, the condition was that it had to go towards the pension fund. Mm -hmm. That was a condition of it. Well, a lot so of it did, didn't it? It went under the teacher's pension fund? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But since then, that, I mean, that was a time when, when, when discipline was imposed on us, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right? But since then, we've just said, well, that's been war. And so now, now, like you just said, the monster is upon us. Mm -hmm. and, and not just with that fund, but with, with our expenditures and everything else. And this is really, really predictable. And... I don't think it's fair, and I don't think it's actually accurate to say that this is a government uh, strategy to to hammer the unions. Actually, I think this is this is just reality. This is this is the natural result of the spending that's happened over the last you know eight to ten years. Well, and, and accurate or not, it's certainly going to come in handy when they sit down at the table. Uh, Brad, we do have to run to our next caller, but I, I appreciate it. Let's talk again very soon, and I'm really really uh, interested in seeing how this uh, case goes. It's coming up soon. It's going to be interesting. Thanks, Pete. All right. Good night. Okay. Take care.